Today we're going to be installing a 360 glide boom height system on this R4030 sprayer. First step in this process is to go along and unplug all five of the OEM ultrasonic sensors that are on the boom. Simply unplug them and using the supplied caps and plugs, fill each one of the cavities. There's one on the secondary, one on the primary, and one in the center with the, for a total of five. Now for the center sensor, we are going to reuse the harness that goes to it to plug our main boom height harness into. So all we want to do is plug the sensor itself. With the OEM sensors unplugged, we can now start running our harnessing. The first harness we're going to run is the 419-311 trunk harness that will plug into your center OEM sensor using the 4-pin female connection on one end that is tied with a 4-pin male connection. That 4-pin male is an auxiliary harness that we are not using at this time. You can go ahead and cap it with the added 4-pin plug. Using that 4-pin female, we will now plug into the OEM harness that came to the OEM center sensor. With that plugged in, we can feed the rest of the harness through the center of the boom architecture out towards the back, towards the SMP. We will run this harness through the boom architecture, down the SMP, and to the center wide drop location, securing it with zip ties along the way. Now with the harness installed, we can install your combo board controller. Um, it has a 12-pin black connector and a 12-pin gray connector that will coincide with the 12-pin gray and black connectors on the board itself. Um, they cannot be mixed up. You plug the gray into the gray and the black into the black. With the combo board connected, you now need to secure it to the boom. The mounting location itself is not important as long as the connectors are not facing upwards towards the sky so that they can hold water. Now with your main trunk harness in place, you can now install your 419-314 boom extension harnesses. If you look at your main trunk harness, there is a left, center, and right connection at the back of the boom. The left needs to go to the left as you're sitting in the cab, the right to the right, the center will go directly down. The boom extension harnesses are identical. You can use either one to either side as long as the left goes respectively to the left. On the boom extension harness, there is a female side and a male side. We will need the female connection to connect to the male on the main trunk harness. With that connected, you can now start to follow this along the boom. We'll secure it as we go. To avoid pinching or stretching the wire, find an existing electrical harness and follow that along the corner of the boom. Now I'm going to string out the rest of the harness and then come back and secure it tightly, keeping the rest of the slack at the far end. Now with your harness laid out across the boom, you can now go back and secure it with zip ties. Once you've reached the location for your last wide drop breakaway, leave your harness slack until the new triple magnet breakaway has been installed to know exactly how much harness you're going to need. With the left boom extension harness installed and secure, you can now repeat this exact process on your right boom with the other boom extension harness. On the three drops that will have the 360 glide sensors installed on them, you'll need to replace your existing breakaways with a triple magnet version. These new breakaways will also include a new hardware kit C, which is your U-bolts, nuts, and washers to mount the new breakaways. These breakaways mount exactly like the original breakaways, so we notice there's an extra sensor harness here. Make sure that that goes to the front of the SMP as you're mounting it.
U-bolts use a half inch impact to tighten them down. With this breakaway installed, double check to make sure that the harness is not being pinched between the SMP and the breakaway itself. Once this is complete, you can go ahead and repeat this process for the center section and for your right primary section. With the breakaway installed, we can now reinstall the riser, slip it back into place with the spring towards the top, and pin it in. We can now reinstall your Y drop base as well. Slide the shield back over the riser. Pin the wide drop base back in as well. The wide drop base on, bring the shield down, a little clip in place. To improve the accuracy of the glide sensor, we need to limit the ability of the riser to swing backwards. We do this by adding a splint around the spring, which will limit its ability to move backwards, but allow it to move side, by side to side and forward as well. The first step to installing the splint kit is to install the spacer blocks. You can see inside this groove there's a circular nub. That will go in the indentation on the riser on each side to sandwich it. Once these are in place, you can slide this sleeve over the top of both of them. There are four bolt holes on each on the spacer blocks and on the um, sleeve. And you put four bolts through that. You can see on one side of this sleeve, there are carriage bolt holes or square holes on one side and circles on the other side. Use the carriage bolts from the right side to install it. We use four quarter twenty serrated flange lock nuts to lock this in place. With the bolts tightened, the splint sleeve is locked in orientation so it is pointing towards the forward direction of motion. Now we repeat the process in reverse on the top. The nub will now go on the bottom into this dimple on each side. Likewise, the sleeve goes on the same way, but with the horizontal surface at the top instead of the bottom. Slide the carriage bolts in. Thread on your lock nuts. Now we can install the splint cable. Slip a U-bolt through each side. And then take that U-bolt and put it through the holes on the top and bottom sleeve. Use the supplied nylocks to lock these in place. The threads of the U-bolt make this adjustable, so we'll tighten these down until the cable is lightly tightened. To be able to get onto the top two nylocks, you may need to drop the riser back off of the breakaway to gain clearance.
the splint system installed, the riser now has the ability to move forward, to the left and to the right, but it cannot move backwards. In the event that the base makes contact with the ground, the breakaway will provide the protection necessary and break away. We can now install our sensor assembly. There are two holes, top and bottom. You see the bottom are square for a carriage bolt. You center it on the wide drop base itself. Then using a 3 8 drill bit, drill out the top. Do not go all the way through. Just go through the top layer of plastic. Holding the sensor assembly in position, also drill out the bottom holes. Once again, only drill through the bottom layer of plastic, not all the way through. With both sets of holes drilled, you can now use the 3 8 carriage bolts coming up through the bottom. Then use the washer and 3 8 lock nut on the top. You can snug these down with a 916 socket. Now with this sensor assembly install complete, you can repeat this process on the center section and on your right boom section. Now we can install the 419-312 drop harness. We'll start at the bottom with a three pin connection that plugs directly into the sensor body itself. With this plugged in, we'll just work our way up the riser, securing it as we go with zip ties. When installing the harness and the hoses around the splint, leave just a little bit of extra slack there in case it were to get dragged forward. This could pull tight. Once you have the drop extension secured, you can use the two-pin female connection that comes off of the breakaway itself and plug that into the two-pin male on the drop extension harness. You can now secure this to the SMP as well. The boom extension harness is made to fit several different lengths of primary boom section, therefore you may have a little bit of extra depending on your boom. Safely secure the rest of your remaining harness to the SMP. The last step to the harness install is to connect the four pin male connection from the boom extension harness to the four pin female connection from your drop extension. Once you've done that, you can secure the rest of your boom extension line. Repeat the same process to install the drop extension on the right section as well as the center section. The only difference on the center section is that you will plug the drop extension directly into the center main harness versus the boom extension harness. With the harnesses installed, this completes your 360 glide boom height system install and it will be the same on all of your John Deere sprayers across the board. The last step here is to go into the cab and set up your monitor. All right, we're out here today in our 2018 R4030. Um, we just got done installing the harness and the drops for our 360 glide boom height system. Um, today we're going to show you how to set that up in your monitor. So as you can see here, when you start your sprayer, um, you go to your home screen, you'll see the BoomTrack Pro box here in the corner. This is a 4600 monitor, so it'll be a little bit different for the 2600 and the 2630, but we'll go through those in a different video. So click on your BoomTrack Pro box, 
You can see your measurements over here. So these are the measurements from the three 360 sensors. What you'll do is you'll click on the top bar up here and that'll go to your information and settings tab. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that when you click on your sensors that you have the right serial number at the right location. So right here we have L1 and when we go here we'll go 36001. We'll click on that, exit out of there, exit out of there for the center section. We want 36002. So we'll click on 36002, X out of here. R1, we want 36003, we'll click on that, and X out of here. And we want to make sure our outer sensors are off. So in those locations, we've actually unplugged the BoomTrack Pro sensors, and we don't have any sensors in those locations. So we'll make sure they're off. Uh, we're good here, and we're also good on R2. So we go back to our home page, and we can actually set our boom down to our target height, which is about 12 inches off the ground with the wide drop basis. So we'll set that down and we'll go down a little bit on the right hand side, a little bit more on the left hand side. And you can see here on our, on our measurements from our sensors, we have 75, 77, and 72 or 73. So what we want to do is we, we want to change our target height. And this is really important because if you actually engage the BoomTrack Pro system now, it'll dive those wide drops into the ground. So we want to set our target height always right at our set point here where our sensors are, are reading. So we'll go into our target height and we'll click on this. We'll go about 75 or 78, say, to start. Just to be safe, we'll make them all 78. Start with a measurement a little higher than you think you're going to need to run. That way you don't dive your wide drops into the ground initially. So we'll exit out of here. Our target height is still at 78. Our sensors are reading anywhere from 72 to 75. And we can actually engage the BoomTrack Pro system. And it'll move our booms up and down a little bit. And then we can check our, our, our wide drop bases. Uh, we might be, want to be a little bit lower than where we are right now. So we'll disengage that by bumping the center section up a little bit. Go into our target heights. Say make those 75 instead. Just give us three inches lower to keep us about 12 inches off the ground with the wide drop bases. So double check, we've got them all at 75. You can change your raise and lower response as needed depending on the type of your terrain. It doesn't matter for the 360 system whether you're reading from ground or canopy. So we'll keep it in ground just to be consistent. So now our target height's at 75. We're a little bit higher than that on our right wing in our center section, but we'll re-engage. And you can see we'll come down just a little bit and get us right there where we want to be, about 12 inches off the ground. And after you've got your target height set and you're happy with where your drops are, that will conclude the monitor setup for the R4030 with the 4600 monitor.